This is day one. I started talking to people in the city saying, Moostek. I met Robert, a Romanian living in Germany, visiting Prague, who speaks decent English. We walked and talked for an hour and stopped for a drink when I met my arch nemesis. Sparkling water. It was grossly mediocre. It was okay. It's after sipping this beverage that I learned a new word. Ahoy. Yes, like the button. Captain Jack's an informal greeting like, hi, hey, or all hail Václav Havel, the one and only last president of Czechoslovakia and the first president of the Czech Republic. It was sitting there, sipping on my sparkling water, that I learned something else. French people smoke. France, I'm sorry, but someone's got to say it. Your airport's a mess, the gates are mid, and the two ladies sitting next to me smelled like they lost their deodorant on May 10th, 1940. I wonder what else was lost that day. Day two, I slept from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. like any hardworking man would, then I went to a calisthenics park because I'm allergic to having fun. It's here I met Wojta, a 23-year-old German who could do more muscle-ups than me. I knew he was German because I asked, hey, come here often? And he responded, I come five to six Monday through Saturday and follow a strict training regimen designed for muscle hypertrophy full by drinking a pint of DAS beer while listening to background construction sounds to maximize your efficiency when working. It's at this point I returned to my room and cried, because even after he taught me, I still can't do one muscle-up. But in my self-pity, I discovered a whole new world. Pat and Matt. I was hooked. I learned how to have a Czech picnic, what Czech bees sound like, and how to make a Czech solar-powered lawnmower. Which taught me a new word. Dite. Which means my IQ when I watch Matt and Pat for hours while eating comfort food and an image of Wojta doing muscle-ups replays over and over and over in my mind. Don't worry about me. I'm <laughs> fine. She stayed over there. Day three, I'm a vampire. With jet lag, my sleep schedule still consists of going to bed between 7 and 9 a.m. and waking up only when the sun has gone down. When I did wake up, I went to Lidl. Not little, because I'm a big boy. As an American, their bread is amazing. I was told to try it with Tora? Tora is a type of unripened curd cheese that is traditionally produced from fresh cow's milk. And honestly, it's simple but delicious. Nice. On the bus, I talked with Adam. He's in his late 20s, speaks great English, went to university in Prague, and works here. He told me about this gym. The Spartan Gym. And now I have to go. For Adam! I went on the coldest two mile run of my life and saw this cool Pikachu car. Also, Adam speaks French, so sorry for always roasting your culture. Day four, I was exploring the city when I got lost. Luckily, I met Matt. When I saw him, I knew he was a tourist because he had shorts on, and no chick wears shorts in January. Matt is on a backpacking trip and made the humble mistake of planning his trip during the coldest time of the year. And he didn't pack a coat. Come on. We kumbaya'd in a mall and discussed important things like what a kalachi is, why we are both lost, and the meaning of life. Simple things. Then I was hungry, so I went on a mission to find kalachi. But I got distracted when I realized I had to go to the bathroom. I meandered through the mall only to find out public bathrooms, they don't exist here. After paying a euro to do the potty dance outside the stalls for 15 minutes, I returned to my quest to find kalachi. But because I was so good at getting distracted by all the beautiful women buildings. All the shops were closed, so I took this grainy video of the castle instead. Enjoy! Day 5. Have you ever looked at a honking piece of bread that cost 26 crowns and thought, I should buy that? Well, I did. Which brings us to today's word. Big honking bread. They don't have a word for honking, so you're just getting bread. Flat. I kept getting followed around by this little cart, but so look how cute Hawaii. it is. I wish we had those in America. Wait, hold on. Oh, it's Walmart? You have those huge baskets on purpose so people buy more? And you're willing to pay me how much? This just in. Those little baskets. I'm no longer allowed to call them cute. They're a dog. Keep your money, Walmart. I don't want it. But if you want to play in the DL, like, it's cool. I didn't meet anyone in person today, so I kind of totally failed. But I did get connected with a man, Jacob. He goes to school and has a part-time job. So ladies, if you need a man. You can't have any fun. Day six. The problem about living in Europe and working a remote job is working U.S. West Coast hours. 3 p.m. to midnight. So naturally, I explore early in the day. This taught me something. Prague is a late night city. With luck, I ran into Wojta again at a different calisthenics park. I was walking by and saw his buff German frame, you know, just being all strong and stuff. But I have to meet someone new every day. So I met Vicky at Lidl. She's a mom who barely speaks English, and I kind of feel bad because her little kid was probably deathly afraid of me. But I think he was having a good time. And you know why? Because kids in Czech, they all have one thing in common bikes. These tiny push bikes, they ride them around the city constantly, and it's kind of cute, honestly. They're bundled up in winter clothes like a big blue marshmallow on this tiny bike, and oh, it's awesome. He might have been deathly afraid of me, but I'm sure it just made him ride faster. But these bikes got me thinking, why don't I try something new? Why don't I? Yeah, I'm way too big for this. After hours of searching, walking, tears, I finally found it. Oh, and these donuts look really good too. But just when I thought I succeeded in my quest, I met Veronica. Veronica is from the Czech Republic and super nice. 
She also told me that kolache from Albert's isn't really kolache. I need to go to an authentic bakery to get the good stuff. So now I have a new quest. Kolache. If you have any good recommendations, let me know. While finding kolache, I learned something unusual. In the US, if you lay eggs, it's always in a dozen. 12. Here, 10 eggs. They really love that metric system. I gave sparkling water a second chance, but this time it's flavored. And it's named Citron, so if I don't like it, I'm blaming the French. Oh. I fell asleep at 3 a.m. after blundering my queen, only to wake up at... 3 p.m.? I met a host of people at this board game meetup, and I learned about this game, Saboteur. You are a gnome, and you are trying to reach gold. The problem is, you don't know which of the three cards is gold. And some people in the group are bad gnomes, and they are trying to lead you away from the gold. Good gnomes want to build tunnels to reach the goals, and bad gnomes want to stop you. It's similar to Mafia or other party games. It's one big mind game. It's even more fun when half the people don't speak English. Sitting there, playing a chick game with people from all over the world, Australia, India, China, US, Czech Republic, Slovakia. I felt this immense sense of humanity. We might come from different backgrounds, speak different languages, have different cultures, and play different games. We aren't all as different as we think we are, and we all have one thing in common. We just want to win as the bad gnome and saboteur. I followed this band around, so now I have authentic broad street music. But following around a band is exhausting, so I needed some energy. That's when I discovered Cold Strong. It's a caffeine sugar bomb, and TBH was mint, but kept me awake. In my energy induced craze, I found a football stadium. Footballový stadium. This may come as a surprise to you, but I'm actually pretty good at football. And don't worry, I remember that goal for the Czech Republic. Euro goals! It's Patrick Schick! I met Anishka from these videos, which is so cool. She told me about this place, Czech Paradise. There's castles, nature, and oh, it's close until April. But if there's anything I'm learning, it's that 30 days might not be enough. Today, I didn't just meet a stranger. I met a friend, a blue cow friend. We laughed together, cried together, even embarrassed ourselves in public for this video together. Blue cow outside the children's museum, I will always remember you. Sadly, I had to do adult stuff, so I went home to do laundry and consume Tide Pods like a normal adult. But after taking a nice shower, I was cold and I needed a blanket. Ica. I went to the only place I can think of to get a blanket, the mall. Now I'm warm and cozy, but nothing makes me feel as warm as my friend, the blue cow. Today I met the Prague beaver, Billy. But when I reviewed the footage, I was bamboozled. It's not a beaver, it's a Nutria. Nutria v He lives right here, and man is he a hard worker. We don't speak the same language, he might not even know I exist, but I can already tell we have a special connection. I mean, just look at Billy. He looks like he supports a wife and three kids off of one salary. Seeing a hardworking Billy motivated me to go for a run, and I wanted to take a moment to say thank you, Billy. You might never know how many people you inspire. My man, Pug Boy Gimli, was the plug and told me to check out Pus Colache. I didn't mean... I didn't meet, I don't know. I didn't meet Pug Boy in person, but I did meet Adam. Let me tell you, going from Albert's to this, no comparison. But you know what else has no comparison? The coolness of Adam. It's unmatched. He's from Hungary, speaks great English, and dresses in business casual. It also snowed. I mean, just look at the aesthetic of the city. It's great. Pug boy, you're a real one. Adam, stay cool. See ya. Have you ever been somewhere and not known the language? Well, that's what happened to me. I was at the store and I was talking to the cashier. I asked him, Mluvish Anglitsky. This means do you speak English? And as I know, I was told by a Czech to use another word. I think it's Mivete, which is a more informal way because Mluvish is like if you know someone and the cashier. Maybe we thought it was weird. But point is, we made uncomfortable eye contact for about two seconds and then in Czech he said cash or card. Now even though he said that, at the time, I had no idea what it meant. It was a weird interaction. He seemed disappointed, I was confused, but I walked away from the conversation with some groceries and a firm understanding that he did not, in fact, Mluvish Anglitsky. But you know who does speak the Anglitsky? Ryan. Ryan Mluvished all over that Anglitsky. Ryan's an older fella, but he's visiting some friends for a few weeks and hey, cool guy. But most importantly from today, I learned if I try to speak Czech and they can tell I have no idea what I'm saying, I'll just look at me. Sad and disappointed because Czechs stick together. I went to a board game meetup and let me introduce you to the crew. Hesser from Hungary, Paula, Heyman, Adam from somewhere in Central Europe, Masha from Ukraine, Vaisha from, who knows, Neil from Israel, and Gloria from the Czech Republic. We played Exploding Kittens! And Neil completely wiped the floor with all of us. But we had a good time. I kept trying to be funny and make jokes, but none of them landed and nobody laughed. I kept telling myself it's because the humor's different here, but... Is it really? So I asked Anina, who says Czech humor is normally dark and dry. Like the basement in my apartment, which I will never go near because I am sure there's a monster inside. To test this theory, here's a joke I saw on the internet. Why don't Slovaks like Czechs? They prefer cash. Huh? 
Ha. I'm still trying to understand Czech humor, so here's a joke I heard from Hansa. A Czech goes into the optometrist. The eye doctor gives him a table and says to read it out loud. C-Z-R-N-H-K. The doctor says, can you read this? The Czech says, read. Mr. Hot still owes me 50 bucks. I probably butchered the pronunciation of that, but it means dude. My heart. If you didn't think that was funny, neither did I. But Hansa sure loved it. He's an odd guy, and maybe he was just messing with me, but I'll take what I can get. But at least I got to try something new. Horziche. It's this mustardy horseradish sauce, which tastes about as good as it sounds. Hansa, if you get any better jokes, hit me up. Wow, that is wrong. Sometimes there's a word your language doesn't have yet. In English, kindergarten is German, mosquito is Spanish, paparazzi is Italian, lemon from Arabic, penguin is Welsh, ballet is French, karaoke from Japan, and the list goes on. Even other languages will take words and say them a little differently to make them theirs. There are words like troca or yarda in Spanish. And in Czech, it's words like croissanti, burgery, waffle. Today you learned three words, not just one. I wanted to meet people, so I went to an English online conversation, which I thought was just to talk, but it actually was an English learning class. I met Melissa from Colombia and Ashar from France. Both were learning English, and here's the two biggest tips I gave them. One, make mistakes as much as possible. The more you fail, the faster you learn. Just be confident and go for it. Two, surround yourself with it. Read it, listen to it, movies, phone settings in that language, it'll help. You're awesome, see ya. I know I'm getting into Czech life because I downloaded Alza. This green alien is the most annoying ad I've ever seen. Now understand a word he's saying. Alza is like Timu, but just for the Czech Republic. Luckily, people seem to share my sentiment of this green alien. I mean, just look at this video. The reason I downloaded Alza was because I was trying to get a microphone to do street interviews, but instead, I met Pavela when I went to Fotoshkoda to get this. And you're gonna see more of this soon. Also, is it weird I'm Loki starting to tolerate the taste of Horzicha? Today, I learned something about Czech culture. They are brutally honest. They don't care if they hurt your feelings, and they'll tell the truth. The cold, hard, so when I asked people what they thought of Americans, this is what they had to say. Do you think Americans have culture? I think we have unique culture uh, about movie industry, for example. We have good uh, culture about how your cities and villages look, your architecture, how people are talking uh, between each other. For example, you are so good in a small talk, which I never <laughs> will understand. Naturally, today's word is honest. I met Amina in person. She speaks perfect English and is learning idioms. These are phrases such as cream of the crop, the best of both worlds, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, and pardon my French. Awesome. And I learned this really funny Czech saying. One of the most popular is 333 stříbrný stříka Czech stříkalo přes 333 stříbrný střech. Does Czech have any idioms? Let me know below. You're awesome. See ya. I made a mistake that angered the entire Czech Republic. Let me explain. This is a green alien. He's the mascot of the company Alza. Alza sells electronics. However, in my last video, I said that Alza is like the Czech Timu, and then I got absolutely flamed. I realized I had to do some digging, and you know what? I had a bad take. Y'all are right. But don't get too cocky, because I heard a worse hot take from my man Miroslav. Miroslav was on the train when the conductor was asking for tickets. He helped me translate because the conductor didn't speak any English. Then we chatted for a bit. Then he said something completely wild. That Matt and Pat is lame. If you've been here since the beginning, you know I love Matt and Pat. It taught me the sound Czech bees make, how to make a Czech solar powered lawnmower, and more. When someone makes fun of Matt and Pat, they're not just making fun of a show. They're making fun of a movement, a people, a culture. Which hot take do you think is worse? Because while well, he said Matt and Pat was bad, today I have one goal, to find a wireless microphone to do street interviews. This ended up being a lot harder than I thought. First, I went to a computer and gaming shop. They had dope keyboards, mice, and setups, but only desktop mics. They referred me to a music shop. So I went there, and they had some sweet vinyls, but no microphones. And they told me to go to a guitar shop. So I walked down there, and they only had XLR and instrument mics. But he told me to check out this one place, Fotoshkola. By now, I'm exhausted. I just want to get my mics and go home. I don't know if it was a marketing tactic, but it worked. How? By the time I got to Fotoshkola, they finally did have what I was looking for, but it was 8,000 crowns, or almost 400 USD. And while it hurt to spend over 10% of my monthly income on this, this next part is going to be sweet. Stay tuned for what's coming next. Yeah, I'm Adia, všichni moc dobře znáte. A dneska jsem tady z... Nothing beats a beautiful Czech wo... Sunset. HR confirmed, I meant... Západ slunce. But you know what else is beautiful? They're... Trdelnik. Guess what I was told by Yirka? Turns out Trdelnik isn't Czech at all. It got famous when a Russian businessman realized he could make buku buck selling it to tourists and they started marketing it as a traditional Czech dessert, even though it's totally not. This doesn't change the fact that it's still really good. It's a crispy, sweet churro filled with cream and chocolate. 
And oh, the innuendos are just riding themselves. But I will stay strong. Yurka is in his 20s uh, and studying student. film. There's a full interview Yurka. coming and soon, so stay tuned. And even five. though it will be really good, you never understand a culture until you understand its people. And in Czech's case, they love telling stories. That's why I met up with Adele. She told me crazy stories about Prague, the Czech Republic, Charles Bridge, and so much more. You see this water right here? Well, apparently there's a monster in it called a Vodnik. Vodnik is like a leprechaun who haunts the waters and pulls people in if they get too close. Or this statue on Charles Bridge, which apparently had a lover and he went off to war and he was gone so long and she went there every night to try to see him, but he never came back and she ended up eventually freezing on the bridge. Now, supposedly, her ghost haunts the area, and if you listen really carefully at night, you can hear it. It didn't take me long to realize almost every Czech story involves death, drinking, and usually both. That's just the Czech way. So now I know why. You know that animals make different sounds in different languages? It's called onomatopoeia. So when I learned how to say cat in Czech, Kuchka. I also learned that they don't say meow, they say meow. And when I learned how to say duck, Kachna. they don't quack quack they make catch catch yeah totally different but that's why until you spend time with the locals you don't really know a culture that's why i went to another board game meetup where i met marcus he's actually from germany he's 25 and he moved to prague three days ago to work in it we played isle of cats which is the most confusing game ever and i care about video retention so here's a picture of a kitten Aww. then i found out in german cats don't make either of those sounds they make a meow sound now that i know what sound a czech cat makes i feel a little bit closer to the culture and if you remember day three when i met voita he's also from germany so meeting Marcus made me want to try muscle ups again. And it went about as well as you think. Just to address the elephant in the room, I spilled water on myself. When I tried Hordziche, the comments had something to say. They recommended I try Hordziche Plochitna, which means mustard full of fat, which now makes sense why it tastes similar to American mustard. Wink, wink. Naturally, I bought it. And let me tell you, this is way better than the horseradish okay. mustardy stuff they probably gave the peasants as punishment. But you know what else blew my expectations out of the water? Meeting Ludwig. He barely spoke any English, so we spoke using Google Translate, and he politely informed me Czech people don't really talk to strangers, so I got the hint. But he was still nice about it. Maybe there's other types of words each I should try, and if so, then let me know below. I'm willing to try anything. Pause. I'm in pills and to spend time with my half-brother, Frederick. He's two and a half, loves trains, and just started to speak. But there's a small problem. He only speaks Czech. This means I can only communicate to him in one language. Trains. Trains is our language to communicate. As we were playing, he kept making sounds I've never heard a two-year-old make before. The Czech R sound, the shoes, the zzz, that no English-speaking toddler would make. But buddy, please learn English. I promise it's worth it. Sitting there, playing with my half-brother who speaks a different language, I realized we're not so different after all. We may grow up in different places, speak different languages, have different cultures, but we all just want to be happy and play with trains. I interviewed the Alza alien. Kind of. I'm in Pils in Czech Republic to hang out with my half-brother. One morning, I decided to go for a walk. And if you remember a few videos ago, I discovered Alsa, made the mistake of calling it Timu, and I've since repented. The same Alsa whose ads <laughs> haunt my dreams, he has a physical store. I had to check it out. They have every kind of electronic, appliance, headphones, Macs. P.S. There was an Apple person there, and they got mad at me for filming the Macs, so whoops. And check out how cool these Lego sets are. They're sweet. But there's one thing I couldn't look away from. Alza himself sitting on his throne, which was definitely not just a gaming chair. So I went to ask him some questions. Do you think Alza is like Timu? I guess we'll never know. European bread and American bread are completely different, but it somehow took me 27 days to discover one of the funnest inventions ever, a bread slicer. You pick whatever bread you want, and this machine just goes to town. Ever since I got to the Czech Republic, I've gotten fresh bread every single day. It's addicting. You end up with fresh and sliced bread. You can even pick how thick you want it. You can't go wrong. But what good is freshly baked bread without somebody to share it with? So I met Olga at a coffee shop, and she told me that Czechs love to talk about politics. In fact, she knew as much about US politics as I did. If US politics were as good as Czech bread, maybe I'd pay more attention. I only have a few more days here, but if you know any good bakeries or things I should try, let me know. Most people travel to big cities. I think you learn a culture best when you're in smaller places, the way most people live. If you look at a map of the Czech Republic, 10.5 million people live here. The top three cities have about 2 million people. That means 80% of the population lives outside of what most tourists see. This particular city, Pilsen, is still the fourth biggest city, but has a much different feel than Prague. It is home to the original Pilsner or Kel This is the most popular beer in the Czech Republic. I don't drink, but I do take tours of cool places. I also went to the 
science museum with Freddy. We spent like five hours there. We played with blocks, this spinny thing, and then nap time. I asked Peter what he thinks of American culture, and this is what he had to say. What do you think American culture is? Mm -hmm. For me, the past is pretty brutal, but that's nothing for you. Yeah, yeah. You, you <laughs> can't do anything about that. But it really depends. Like for me, Americans like all right, but for other people, they're like stupid Americans, fat people. I also checked out the post office, which is crazy. As an American, it looks very similar to the DMV, and you can do all sorts of stuff here, even buy gambling tickets. And it's here I learned that Czechs have a very distinctive view on luck. Specifically, he wanted us to pick out exactly what card we wanted, whereas in America, they would have just picked one, handed it to you, and then you move on with your day. He also said this specific phrase of something about having luck. I don't know what it meant, but he kept saying it when we'd get different tickets. I don't know if it was just him or all Czechs, but maybe some of you guys know. I asked Adele what she thinks of American culture, and this is what she had to say. What do you think of American culture? Well, I kind of love American culture because of the movies, of the celebrities, fashion, and just the whole country. But I would never move there because of the people. I've been noticing a common theme. People like America for various reasons, but it's not a place they would choose to live. Some say it's the people, others politics. Let me know what you think below. Lastly, I tried calisthenics again. And I'm about to spoil Czech's biggest secret. If you want to call somebody bro, you call them Kambo. I learned this from meeting Peter, who introduced me to his favorite dish, Datora. There's a full interview coming soon, but unfortunately today is my final day in the Czech Republic and I need to say my goodbyes. So thank you to Adele, Anina, Franta, Freddy, Honza, Matt, Olga, Pavel, Peter, Ryan, and everyone else. And yes, this list is in alphabetical order because Czech people are very organized. I learned how Czech people eat, live, play, drink, and so much more about Czech culture than I ever thought I would. And as I flew back to the US on the emptiest flight I've ever been on, I couldn't help but miss the place I was leaving behind. I came to Czech as an American and I hope to leave as a Gamo.